Download free photos, music, and more at TonyClarets.com. You can use them for personal or commercial use. The History of the Kneeboard Kneeboarding has had a rocky road on its way to becoming one of the mainstays of the water ski industry. 2013 marks 40 years as a commercially produced product. That's been enough time for the kneeboard to grow from a fad in the 1970s to public darling of the 1980s and then mature in the mid-1990s as the Rodney Dangerfield of water skiing. And through it all, kneeboarding continues to hold its own with sales of about 100,000 units per year. The creation of any new sport is usually a drawn-out series of events with an interesting cast of characters, and the development of kneeboarding was no exception. As far back as the early days of water skiing, riders experimented with kneeling down on round plywood discs. There were many others who fooled around with kneeling on surfboards, and even people who rode kneeboards made specifically for riding waves. But it was not until the early 1970s that a new product, the water ski kneeboard, was to emerge. Knee Ski the development of the modern-day kneeboard all started with a chance meeting between my uncle, Mike Murphy, and Bud Holst. Holst operated El Pipo, a manufacturer of kneeboards for riding waves in the surf. His El Pipo kneeboards had a hand-shaped foam core with a fiberglass wrap. A pair of rope handles was glassed into the top of the board so riders could grab them during hard turns on the waves. Each El Pipo board came standard with a single 9-inch fin and thin neoprene pad. Mike and Bud's first meeting occurred after Holst attended a wave riding contest near San Francisco, California in 1971. The event was blown out, so Bud took the opportunity to visit the nearby ski show at Marine World. Bud hung out after the show and watched as Mike, Gary Warren, and a few other Marine World skiers took turns wake surfing for a photo shoot. They towed up on a surfboard and then let go of the rope to catch the endless wave behind the boat. Bud wanted to try it on his kneeboard and talked his way into a ride. When he was done, Mike tried Bud's El Pipo kneeboard too, getting pushed by the stern roller without the rope. The two men parted, but both were thinking about the possibilities of kneeboarding behind the boat. A couple of months later, Marine World became Marine World Africa, USA, and the new management had some bad news. All the runoff from the animals had contaminated the ski show site. Skiers could stay if they wanted, but Mike chose to head south to L.A. Mike had thought a lot about his kneeboard ride on Bud's board, so when he got back to Southern California, he went to Bud's shop and told him his ideas for a brand new product. Mike thought that the kneeboards made for surfing could find a much bigger market as a towable for water skiing. Mike wanted to take off the fin so riders could do surface turns just like trick skiers. He also wanted to add a thicker pad and strap so riders could jump the wakes. The strap would be easy because the turn handles in the El Pipo boards were already the perfect attachment point. Bud agreed, and the two men decided to create the world's first production water ski kneeboard under the name of Knee Ski. By 1972, Mike had designed a board that would perform surface tricks easily and still carve surf-style turns. The first boards were hand-shaped foam and fiberglass, but Mike didn't like how the boards floated so much. Niski switched to a neutral flotation model that was made from molded fiberglass, just like a boat hull. Each Niski had a flat neoprene pad covering the entire deck and a Velcro strap. Now riders could jump and spin in relative comfort and security. Knee Ski was on the market, and Mike hit the road for a year to promote the new way to ride behind a boat. But the high price, $125 in 1973, met with small success, and Knee Ski faded from the picture. In 1973, I took my first kneeboard ride on one of Mike's Knee Skis. We were at the Marine Stadium in Long Beach, California, and I easily did a sliding start off the sandy beach. But Uncle Mike expected more than just simple riding and cutting across the wakes. He wanted me to do a 360 spin. Didn't he know I was just an 8-year-old having fun keeping it simple? I didn't want to do a 360, so I got a little upset about what he was trying to make me do. Uncle Mike made it clear that my choices were simple. Make the spin or swim in. 
There was a moment of indecision. I was a pretty good swimmer, but we were a long way from our camp. So I got back up on the Niski, and after a few more tries, the 360 was mine. Uncle Mike led the way, and I was compelled to follow. I watched what he did and copied. Backward start? Check. Back wrap 180s and overhead 360s? Okay. 540 landings? No problem. <laughs>